Hey, ladies and gents. Uh, so I had a uh, YouTube guy send me a request for a video. It was Yoshi Mitz. So, boom. Here we go. So Yoshi Mitz said, "Can you make an in-depth guide to Nunu, like the builds, rune, and pathing?" I did respond. So first thing we're doing is going to over this uh, beautiful ad field page. So I have basically four um, builds on this guide. Um, I've got in my highest win ratio, which is the most common. So if you look at all my games, you'll see that um, the one I've used the most, the, mo the one I win the most with is this uh, Resolve Sorcery rune. Aftershock, Fawn of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize. Now that's pretty straight across the board. I don't really change much of my primary runes. Um, there are some exceptions, uh, like when I want to focus tower or pushing, depending on the composition, which we'll go over in a minute. But um, the bottom lane is always going to be celerity or water walking when you go sorcery as secondary. And so your minor runes are always going to be your attack speed, your adaptive, and then you're going to choose either armor or magic resist or health, depending on uh, the composition of the other team. If it's heavy AD, of course you go armor. If it's heavy AP, you're going to go... Uh, magic resist and if you're unsure or it's just kind of split 50 50 then you're going to want to go um uh, health uh, water walking helps tremendously to get dragon at level four so um it does give you uh adaptive um it gives you the movement speed but also gives you adaptive bonus up to 18 attack damage or 30 ability power uh, based on the level when you're in the river so you're gonna have like a little bit of an edge and if you want to prioritize dragons early game especially if there's like an infernal drop those happen a lot and that can turn the whole tide of the game because of the plus 10 adaptive force uh, then you want to have every advantage you can at your pocket so water walking is a good objective focused secondary rune set it also helps against scuttle like if you have kindra or she's got the scuttle mark then you want to go over and take that scuttle you're probably going to be skirmishing with her and that'll help you uh, win that fight as well that's why the rune page works for me because it's very versatile and uh, when you run a snowball through the river, it's pretty fast as well. So it's a lot of good things with this rune set. Secondarily, um, this is more of like a hard hitting um, rune page. A lot of people might like say, oh, I just want to go that one. But you got to understand that you're you're a tank jungler. You're not a um, master Yi, you're not an assassin. And so um, you don't want to necessarily go this route every time because it does uh, reduce your survivability. This rune set is a hard-hitting multi-kill build. It's the only rune set that I've gotten triple kills on. It allows you to uh, use your W and to get into a situation and get extra true damage done on them, which can sometimes be the reason why you one-hit them with a snowball. Uh, Relentless Hunter is great for movement speed. You can also go Ravenous Hunter if you want like extra healing. But um, Relentless Hunter with Nunu is uh, fantastic for engages. I prefer that over the additional healing, but it's it's either or, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, it does hit harder due to the cheap shot. We've covered that. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. That's why I'm referring to the notes. So Relentless tied in with Righteous Glory and Dead Man's Plate. Um, you're going to move your super uh, snowball extremely fast. And then for the minor rooms, always take the first two. For the third one, also depends on your comp as well. All right, CC survival guy. We'll start with the notes this time, see if that goes a little smoother. Um, if the enemy team has two hard CC champions, for example, like Morgana, support, Vagar, bot, mid, then consider this rune page with tenacity. Now, tenacity is a big deal uh, when you are a tank jungler because especially as melee, you need to get in there and get your Q off to survive. You need to be able to get in between um, a lot of uh, enemy champs to do your R. And you have your very small, minimal, short range uh, gap closer with your E. So you don't want to be CC'd and then killed. Uh, that's the last thing you want. With this build, it's more of a tenacity type CC survival guide. If you take this, uh, it'll allow you to kind of get in and out. Um, slow, silences, all of those type of things will be reduced. And this is probably the best route and the only time we really change the second uh, the primary runes because we want to take advantage of unflinching so unflinching gives you uh 15 tenacity and slow resistance after using a summoner spell and so anytime you use a flash or you use a smite 
uh, especially when you're smiting another champion. This this is going to uh, go well for you when you want to get in and get out. And additionally, you gain 10% uh, tenacity and slow resistance for each summer spell on cooldown. So even when they're on cooldown, it's still working. A lot of people don't read that second part, at least I didn't when I first started. And I thought, well, that's only situational. Like, it, only when you use a spell? No, it also counts when you have spells on cooldown. And then the secondary is precision. This is, I believe, the only precision build I use. It takedowns restore 12% of your missing health. That's great for surviving when you've got multi uh, enemies around you. So you kill one of them, you get 12% health. You queue off, now you're half-life, and you're able to take out the second guy. But Tenacity Legend is 5% tenacity plus an additional 2.5 for every Legend stack. And that stacks every 20 points earned up to 10 times. So 20 points for a champion takedown, so you'll get 2.5%. Uh, you also get two and a half percent for epic monster takedowns like dragons and baron once you get four of like raptor camps or krugs or four red or blues then you're going to also get another two and a half percent eventually until you get 10. so you're going to get another 15 percent with this as well so that's 30 plus any of the um uh, items that you get that have tenacity fourth the the beta build that i'm working on this is the tower focused build i did add a couple extra today but i haven't updated on this profile this one's for if you're a tower objective. Now, my secondary is Ramus, and I haven't played him in a long time because I haven't needed to, but he's great at taking towers with his R. This is tower taking Nunu. So you're gonna wanna go demolish and overgrowth. And the reason why you go overgrowth versus revitalize is because you're gonna be in lane a lot. So a minions are gonna be dying around you all the time. And so you want to get that extra health with the overgrowth. Plus you're gonna be, uh, Probably poked a lot because you're in lane too so you want the bone plating then celerity and water walking allows you to transfer quickly between the towers and allows you to get your objectives uh, much faster yeah this is also the great build for if you want to get rift at before 14 and get those tower plates it's great for uh, just objective pushing if you have like say a, a late enemy jungler that um, only plays late game like karthus right karthus doesn't he just farms and moon moon just farms until six Vi also just farms until six uh usually so um you can take advantage of these non 1v1 skirmishers and to go this tower route and you can take your uh rift as early as probably 11 to 12 if you have a leash 10 even if you've got a great one like maybe a jacks or some hard-hitting nasses um then you can get that uh, uh rift and you can drop it on the tower and you can get all that plating and that will definitely help snowball your lane um and the person that you uh you helped so those are like my four basic builds so this is my primary right now this is my secondary i use that when it's very high cc and then i use this one when i want to just try objective tower base i'm still testing this out so it's still in beta all right now on to my items um because nunu has aoe on his um a passive and it causes him to like swipe and hit enemies nearby consider an aoe jungler and we're gonna go red, and we're gonna go Krugs, and we're gonna go Raptors. But because of that, we're gonna get Hunter's Talisman. I've done Machete, it doesn't work with Nunu. You're gonna get a refillable, which you'll change after you know you need the slot with the four like your third item. And then uh, Warding Totem initially. The Warding Totem I use just to get early vision and try to track the jungler where they're starting at. The best place to put this if you've got the time and you've got the priority on the lane is outside the raptor camp because then if they're if you think they're starting red you can tell when they're going to be going to the raptors because that ward will be up and then uh, your mid lane can actually go up there and kill them at red um, that's happened a couple times and it's um, pretty effective but you want to drop it around the 50 to one minute mark the best timing is between 50 and 55 seconds and then that allows you to get back to lane and go to red before it spawns. 55, you might just make it. Because remember, you're not using W first, you're using Q first, so you don't have the uh, speed boost from your snowball to get there. When you go back after you're placing the ward, you're gonna pick up your Oracle Lens so that you can disable wards when you do your ganks early game to help snowball whatever lane you choose to do, which in beta, sorry, this meta 9.15 version is bot lane. Bot lane has priority just because of all the nerfs in the other lanes. Uh, and the buffs in the support lane. Uh, okay, so on the first back. Um, now this number varies. I don't know the exact number. We can probably figure it out that in game. I believe it's around 1375 because this item is 1000, this is 300, and this is 75. So together that's 1375, but you already have 350 out of this. So it's actually like, what, 1050? Uh, so just over 1000. But you're gonna also 
timing wise, you're never going to just have that perfectly. Well, you will, but more often it's best to uh, hold out for that 1375 because you're going to be leaving camps alive if you do that. I found normally when I hit a thousand, I still got like a gromp and wolves to take. You know, I've taken blue and I've got my thousand, but if I go back at that point, I'm, I, I could have gotten those two extra camps and gone back. So most of the first backs around this 1375 gold period right here. The red skirmisher saber is best to get when you're when you're dueling like 1v1. You can also go the blue, but the differences are minimal. I just know that you're going to have a problem, you know, when you upgrade if you don't want to go red. So you want to secure the first dragon, then this is the best thing to do. If you want to play more mid late game, then blue. And I've got to change these notes a little bit. You want to basically go back around this 1375 gold because you're going to try to hit that 440 timer. That's when the first camp that you uh, killed after red, which is the Krugs, respawns. It starts the two and a half minute timer right after you kill the medium Krug. So early game, uh, early game versus AD. So I use blitz.gg. So blitz.gg is a pretty cool website for getting um, compositions. So what it'll do is uh, it'll actually pick up on the game you're playing when you install it. And then it'll break that down. It'll say like, hey, you know, the enemy team right now with their picks is 55, 80, 45 AP. And then I know, you know, they're pretty even or they might have like 85 AD. Well, if they have 85 AD, I'm definitely gonna go AD route. I'm not gonna worry about AP because the one person whose AP is probably a Janus support or something like that. This is flexible. So if you start the game with heavy AP and then the guy whose AP just dominates, you're gonna wanna start building AP because he's the only one that's dominating, right? But we're always going to go Cinder Hulk blue, in my opinion. You can go, I go red Cinder Hulk probably 10% of the time. So you use this against 80 compositions where there's more AD damage than AP. You also use this when the hyper carry, the enemy champion that's snowballing is AD. So again, that's when you're evaluating the game as you go. You're going to use this against 80 composition when there's more AD damage than AP. You're going to use this also when the hyper carry or the enemy champion that's snowballing is AD, even if it's heavy AP. If it's Jinx, uh, an AD hyper carry, like that's 0 and 3, you don't have to worry about her because she's not gonna do much damage to you. And you're never gonna buy Merc Treads just for the sake of it because the MR per, doll, uh, per gold value is very, very low. Um, you're gonna wanna buy that only if you need the tenacity um, to get out of uh, situations like Morgana or Vagar. Uh, Dead Man Plate's always gonna be the first item you buy in this composition. Um, the momentum stacks along with Nunu's melee slow bonus off this item, you'll use this to move uh, faster and hit harder while adding a slow to the mix. Um, you can just read along in the, in the notes here. Um, uh, this alongside your E gives you great um, great ganks, okay? Spirit Fishes is the second item to buy. Um, you're always gonna first buy those two. Dead Man's Plate and Spirit Visage, those are the two items, no matter which comp, it just decides on which one you're gonna pick first. So if it's AP, you'll buy the, the Spirit Visage. If it's Dead Man's Plate, you'll, you'll buy the Dead Man's Plate. But the item right after that, once you get your tier two boots, is gonna be the other. So same thing basically goes with the AP. You're just gonna evaluate it as the game goes. Once you have these main base items, you're also going to go into Gargoyle Stone Plate or Warmox Armor. If I already have 3000 health or very close to it, I'm gonna get Warmox before Gargoyle. This one is a great tanking item. Um, you can use it in pretty much any comp because it's split um, pretty much 50-50 with uh, health um, and armor and magic resist. But it gives you um, a, a just stone skin. And your damage does go down, but it allows you to survive in team fights, maybe even survive a R um, when you're getting multi-attacked. All right, and then late game, you're going to replace the Cinder Hulk with one of these three items. Thornmail is great for Trinomir, Master Yi, Jin, Jax. You know, you just want to go Thornmail because those basic attacks are going to shred them. Uh, Bramble Vest is something you can buy for those if they're healing off of it, uh, like if they have lifesteal. You can just, just get the Bramble Vest until you get your other items. Uh, Randuin's is another option if they're hitting like a truck, like single hit, like Jin. Jin, on his fourth hit, he will do a lot of damage. Randuin's will help with that. Um, that's 20% reduction of critical strikes and adds 70 armor. So it's great against him. Righteous Glory is great for like getting positioning, getting objectives, moving around the map. It allows you to, on a cooldown, use a speed boost. So that's fantastic. You also get 10% more cooldown, which at this point will be about 30%. So it means your R is going to be at pretty much every fight that you need. And then by light game, you should be 75% or higher in resistance um, and damage reduction on both AD and AP, depending on which one you're going towards. Because you don't want to be fighting somebody with only 60%, you're going to die pretty quickly. 
top items uh, that we use based on actual usage. So this is what I actually use in game across all games. These are the top items. Doesn't mean that these items specifically here go well with each other every game. When you don't have any apparent threats and you've got, you know, you're ahead, you're gonna win, your lanes are winning, um, then you're wanting to, uh, uh, you can go into this build, uh, which would start right here, right before Spirit Visage or Dead Man's Plate and get the Hex Tech Proto Belt. Because he does have AP scaling, this will give him a lot of additional damage in game. And I'm gonna be playing around with this in future videos too, um, because it is a lot of fun to play with that if you're able to get away with it. Um, as for threats and synergies, you can go through here and see these are the biggest threats. These are some that um, are uh, good synergy, uh, good champions to play with um, because of their CC abilities or because they're tanking abilities or survivability or, and, and, and whatnot. Uh, you can also go to these videos here and check out um, uh, my new, new how to and how to rank. Plus, there'll be the new video from this that will come up shortly. Having will be done in the next video I'm able to do. That's the, the rune and item breakdown. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Uh, I started in Iron 4, first season playing ranked, so I have done well, but uh, I've got a lot to learn, so please interact. If you want to see future videos like this, please uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's a cool trick. If it's red and you click it, it turns gray. So um, that's a pretty cool thing I wanted to share with you. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate your time.